in the matter because it's his will and it's all according to his good pleasure now I, I just got to say this uh, good morning out you balls y'all have made my day it is so good to see y'all yeah yeah I, I, was, I was looking at the preacher over here and the priest said don't he play the guitar I said yeah he got that big bass yeah he got it well good morning good morning y'all good morning St. Joseph and I just feel fabulous today. I do. And this is our call to worship. As I think about that God called me in all of my foolishness. Now if I can tell you all about some foolishness, you ought to say you need to get from up there. But in the middle of my foolishness, God called me and he, he gave me what I needed to walk through this thing as I was going through the process of getting to where I am today he gave me what I needed to walk through it and I am just elated this morning this is our call to worship and we would be reminded that this is the time of prayer and praise to our God. James 4 and 7 teaches us to submit ourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift our hands in humble submission to your will. We resist the devil and by the power of your Holy Spirit we ask that you would cause Jesus to magnify himself in our midst. Amen. Bless the Lord 
shut it down because of the COVID. So y'all pray for us about it. Pastor Richard Curry, Sister Blondina and Brother Herbert Caswell, Brother Samuel Ballinger, Brother Richard and Sister Easter Sneed, Sister Brenda Sapp, Brother Dar uh, Sister Dorothy Johnson, Sister Hilda Myers, Sister Cynthia Kendrick, Sister Gwendolyn Thomas, Sister Alberta Bowden, Reverend Theodore, and Sister Mary Johnson, Brother Michael Hazel, Brother Nicholas and Sister Andrea Jiggets, Sister Jane Zetta Wallace, Sister Latoya Smith, Sister Hattie Wallace, the Reverend Fred Friday King, Brother Adrian Limbrick, Brother Hobart Fitzpatrick, Brother Bentley Porter, Sister Phyllis Luckett, Sister Michelle Grooms, Sister Miriam Ruth Newsom, Cora Clayton, Jennifer Rainey, Reverend Matthew Quarterman, Quentin McCall, Darrell Stringfield Jr., Vanetta Jackson, Sister Michelle Walker, Brother Bentley, Brother Quint Wallace, Linda Wright, the Hill family, Sherry Cox, Sister Romeo Howard, Bobby Tucker Jr., Valencia Sutton, Brother Ivory Godwin, Brother Michael Sutton, Billy Chapley, Sister Melly, Melody Chapley's brother, Sonia Queen, Trey Hobby, Brother Carlos Robinson, Sister Jarius, Brother Jarius Campbell, Sister Sandra Allen's son, uh, Vanessa and Kalani Starks, Bruce Robinson, Sister Marion Wilson, William and Pearl S Warren and Wer Pearl Smith, Katrilla Stringfield, and Shalithia Stringfield. And I also want us to lift up our sister, Annette Allen, who's in. Uh, Georgia right now with the death of her brother. And the text says from this morning, blessed be, the, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Accordingly, he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world 
that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. And just verse 7, first part of it. In whom we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins. Oh, bless his holy name this morning. Father, we do thank you today for Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Knowing that without him, we can do absolutely nothing. Our world revolves around Jesus because we are in him. We are in him. Oh, bless his holy name this morning. And you have blessed us with everything that we need. Not only for our lives, but for this body called St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church in Black Bottom. So we just thank you today. My prayer is that you will forgive us of our confessed sins and that you will anoint us afresh and make us ready. Touch our hearts today, Lord, so we can receive your word as our pastor bring it to us today. And then, Lord, even before the foundation of the world, you saw this prayer list. So we're going to give it back to you because it's yours. You're going to take care of this prayer list. You're going to do it. You're going to orchestrate it the way that you always do and the way that you want to according to your good pleasure and according to your grace. So thank you for that. Thank you for giving us the confidence and, and, and the wherewith to trust your word. Because your word is real and it changes not. So now I breathe on the St. Joseph family this morning as only you can. Touch our hearts, Lord, and bring us together in that fellowship, that love that you will have us to be in. Breathe on us today. Uh, bless our pastor. Make him ready. Make him ready to teach us today. And just continue to breathe on that Wednesday night Bible study, Lord, as only you can. Uh, thank you today. And as, and as the pastor finishes what you would have him to say, I pray that you will save and add to your church. Strengthen as we learn today. But save and add to your church as such should be saved. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. And we all say together, amen and praise the Lord.
serve a faithful God we serve a holy God God is holy and the good news is God look beyond your faults and meets your every need I'm so grateful and thankful for for our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ I'm going to ask you to follow me, turn with me and follow me in the fifth book of Moses called Deuteronomy, chapter 10, and I'm going to ask you to follow me as I read verses 12 through 21, and when you have it, would you please signify by saying amen. Amen. <clears throat> And now, Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God 
with all thy heart and with all thy soul to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. Behold the heavens and the heavens of heavens is the Lord thy God. The earth also with all that therein is. Only the Lord had a delight in thy father to love them and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. For the Lord your God is God of gods, and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and terrible, which regardeth not persons nor taketh reward he do exercise the judgment of the fatherless and widows and loveth the strangers and giving him food and raiment love ye therefore the strangers for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt thou shalt fear the Lord thy God he shall not serve he shall I'm sorry, he shall thou serve him, him shall thou serve, and to him shall thou cleave and swear by his name. And the last verse says, and he is thy praise, and he is thy God, that have done for thee these great and terrible things, which thy eyes have seen. St. Joseph, you have just read the living word of our God, the grass withered, the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever.
but Jesus. Amen. Nobody, Nobody but Jesus. Nobody. Oh man, this choir is something else. Boy, I'm telling you, good Lord. Look at what God can do with just a handful. Oh man, as God blesses St. Joseph, what do you think he's going to do with a double handful? Oh yes. Oh, God is awesome. He is awesome. And that song was most appropriate, I'm telling you. Every drop was for me, making it personal. Making it personal, Sister Sadie. Make it personal. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, look at St. Joseph today. Look at St. Joseph. Uh, you know, I, I'm telling you. I love God, and God is demonstrating his love back to us. I'm telling you, he is blessing immensely. I can't even think of enough adjectives. I had to start making up some to try to talk about how wonderful God is. I'm telling you, my Lord. Give an honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so thankful for his grace that he grants us. That by believing in him, he does everything else. He saves us. He's the sacrifice that was required. He's keeping us. He is growing us through salvation all the way until he finally glorifies us. To where we are together eternally as a family of God in our glorified bodies. That's going to be a day of rejoicing that's going to be beyond, that's beyond any kind of description. The Bible tells us that. Matter of fact, Jesus says, the mind has not conceived what I've got in store for you. We, we can't, the, the human body can't even conceive all of what he has prepared for us. And so it should just give us joy in knowing that as we try through this life, even though Satan throws all kinds of stuff at us, that he's here inside of us, protecting us moment by moment. And there's not a single thing that Satan or his imps can ever do to destroy you, to discourage you, to do anything that's negative. Only when you allow it does he have any effect in your life. That's why when we open up every service, we say submit to God. Number one, don't ever miss that. Submit to God. And the second thing, resist the devil. Don't talk to him. Don't be out there binding him. It just disturbs my spirit when I see people having service trying to bind Satan up. If it was possible, he ought to be tied up like a, like a snowball by now. You know. But resist him. And keep your mind focused on what Christ has for you. And I'm telling you, there's a joy that will start to, uh, coming into your life that's already in you. 
that will give you the energy and the desire moment by moment each day to just turn and put your foot out the bed and say, God, this is your day. I don't have any idea what you are going to bring about, but what I know is that you are going to make the difference. It is your day. God is such a wonderful God. And then giving honor to the preachers on the pulpit here with me, Reverend Gibson and Reverend Fisher. Okay. To the deacons of this great church, yes. I do understand that our chairman is not feeling too well this morning, so keep him in your hearts as, as, you, uh, as, as you're praying or whatever. Nothing, nothing to be concerned about. He's just not feeling well. So I just want to be sure that you know, because he's so faithful. This, it's like automatic to look over there and see him. You know? So uh, if, you, if you look and then don't see him, just know that he's under the weather. Amen? Amen. And to the beautiful deaconess. Look at you. Oh, you arrayed so wonderfully. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Amen. Amen. To the choir. You know, what more can I say about you guys? I'm telling you. And, 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 and that organist, man, this, this guy, boy. <laughs> Brother Simpkins, boy. What they used to say in the old days, you making that organ walk? Yeah, yeah. Talk? Is it? Oh, talk. Making that organ talk. Oh, okay. I was getting the, the visualization as he's playing and the organ just walking on out the, out, the, out the pit here. But man, I'm telling you what, God has given you a beautiful, wonderful gift. And God, I'm so glad that we got you. <laughs> Amen. And we ain't letting you go nowhere. Hey. Sister, 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 I know. I just like to call her Sister Teresa. <laughs> that has a spiritual sounding to it. Sister Teresa, you know, wonderful job. Wonderful job. Amen. Did y'all know that Deacon Grooms could sing like that? Oh, man, I'm telling you what. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> they still won't let me sing. Every time I find out what day they practice and they'll change it, you know, was, you know, so it, I don't, I finally got the hint. They don't want me singing with the choir. Stay in my lane. Just preach and teach, huh? I got you. All righty. Okay. Bless your heart. Who, me? Oh, you all. Look, that's why I love you, Sister Sadie. That's why I love you, sweet Sadie. Yeah. Thank you for that, darling. Thank you. Thank you for that. Oh, amen. Amen. To St. Joseph, such a wonderful church. You just bring joy to my heart whenever I come and I see you. And it keeps growing and growing and growing. And it's just so beautiful. And to the ushers, see, y'all thought I'd forgotten about you. Never forget about you because you have a wonderful ministry and you're doing your job to the hospitality ministry. I'm getting all kinds of good reports about how you all are greeting and, and showing love, and that's what it's all about. God bless you. To Brother Tucker and to Brother Andrew, you know, up in the sound ministry, multimedia, you know, thank you for what you do. Thank you for what you do. Brother Andrew, I heard that you're working on a little project with one of the deacons to even make the sound quality even better, you know, too. Amen. I'll, you, you all will be, let you be surprised at what it is when it comes. I ain't going to tell you, you know. I, I know how to keep my, my lips sealed up. I don't, uh-oh. <laughs> Brother Archibald, man, I, I was looking, if, when you come, I'll be looking for you on the, on the bass guitar up here, man. Yeah. Brother Carl, I'm telling you something. You want to see somebody play a bass guitar? Brother Archibald, now he can make that bad boy walk. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, talk? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. He make it talk. That's it. That's it. It's so good to see the Tishners, you know, like to bring their names up because they work behind the scene. Don't let nobody know, but they are saving us all kinds of money with 
the way they're handling our website and everything. And we just want to always let the church know. And then there's our mayor back there, him and his wife. That's what's so beautiful about this church. You know, a lot of people say, oh, it's a small church. But we have a mayor that's part of our ministry that is involved with leading one of the leaders in our, our evangelism ministry. And, and, I mean, he's active, too, and he, he loves it to death, you know. So your humbleness, man, God's going to carry you all kinds of ways. Did, did y'all hear in national news that he's been... Um, how would you say it, selected or either, uh, what, what's the term to use? As the National uh, Transportation, I, thought in, 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 I should know it being a pilot because when we crashed the plane, that's who we got to see, see you guys, but by the President of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> by President Biden, in case you don't know who, who he is, you know. But an humble, humble man and his wife. Yeah. I would spend all day long just greeting and telling you all, you know, everybody, because you're so wonderful, so wonderful. And to my lovely wife, God bless you, darling. God, you look so pretty, I'm telling you. That's why I got this sexy voice, sweet Sadie. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Amen. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God has a word for us today. He does. He has a word for us today. Father, we do thank you. For it is in you that we have the, the boldness and the, the power to stand and to teach and preach your word. And God, we pray that knowing that we are never worthy to handle your word, that since you have chosen me as your instrument, I pray now, Father, that you would strengthen me, that you would hide me as you strengthen me, so that you can present yourself and speak to your people through your word. Bless us today. Bless even me. We need to hear from you, God, in days and times like this. So we pray now that you would forgive us of our sins and prepare our hearts now for listening to what you would have to say. Bless us today. In Jesus' name, amen. And praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. I'm just so happy to be alive, I'm telling you. This morning from the scriptures that we read, I want to lift out verse 12. And now, Israel, and I put in parentheses there, St. Joseph, and now, St. Joseph, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God, with all your heart and with all your soul. God's requirements for us are very specific. We should ask ourselves daily, what does God require of me? Moses is quite clear in his text in Deuteronomy explaining to the people what God is intended and expecting from, from, from them. And he says to them, there's a call for you to walk with God. There's a call for you to love God. And there's a call for you to obey God. So this morning, I want to talk to us with this thought in mind. What does God require of us? St. Joseph, what does God require of us? Some feel that all we need to do is just come and show our faces in, in the service. Don't be bothered by nobody. Pay my tithe and go home. You know, don't, don't, that, that, it, leave me alone to do that and I'm fine and happy. 
But God says there are things that I'm requiring of you. And if we would listen to his call to us, his word to us, we would recognize that he has specific things. And that's what we want to talk about this morning so we can be clear in our minds the specific things that God is calling from us. The first thing is to walk. That's number one, to walk with God. The second thing is to love God. And the third thing is to obey our God. Now, we can't walk with God unless we love him. But it's a paradoxical thing. We can't love him unless we walk with him. You know, if you got a friend, if you never associate with them, how can you love them? How, how, what do you know about them? How, 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 what do you say to them? You, you must learn to walk with them, to, to associate with them, to be with them. And as you do do that, then you start loving them. But God, look at him. The number one, first thing he says, walk with me. And walking with him shows a sense of faith. And once we call upon the faith that he's given us, and as we're walking with him, we'll learn to love him. And then as we learn to love him, we'll learn to want to walk with him even more. And then the more we walk with him, the more we love him. And then the more we love him, the more we want to walk with him. It, it, it becomes just, 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 just a circle. Just a circle. To walk with him means that you have to be in agreement. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? You cannot walk together in the midst of a fellowship if you don't agree with each other. And when he's talking about agreeing with each other, not talking about the particular little things, you know, I might want, uh, what, purple carpeting and seats, and you might want the mauve, it is mauve, right? The color we got? Okay, whatever that color is. And then there might be some that says, no, I want royal blue, you know. I mean, I'm not talking about simple things. We're, we're going to have opinions on things. But the main thing, who is your God? Is it money? Are you depending on money to carry you through? If that's what you're doing, I'll give you just a little short testimony. It can be gone before you wake up in the morning. I don't care if you got six figures in the bank. It can be gone in the twinkling of an eye if that's what you are depending on. And a lot of times, being a child of God, it ain't the devil that, that destroyed or took it from you. God could very well be trying to let you see that you got your desires in the wrong direction. God is a jealous God that we serve. He's very, he, he wants himself to be number one in your life. If you got a beautiful home out in Gregory's Mansion area, and you love it to death and all your time and effort and money is going to it, it could be that God may fix some kind of way to where you lose it. Because your heart and everything is pointed toward it. I don't have time for Sunday morning. I know I need to come and worship God, but, but God has blessed me with this wonderful home and, and this beautiful car, and I'm working all during the week, and, and on, on Saturdays I'm, I'm working and I'm trying to rest, and, and Sunday is the only time I got to uh, fix up or take up or whatever. Well, God will fix it to where, you know, he, he, he can become number one in your life again. God is a jealous God. You belong to him, and he's not giving you up. That's the part you got to put in your mind. God has saved you, and he will never let you go. You are trapped. You are a prisoner of God. That's why Paul, in, in several of his, his letters to the churches, he starts off, I'm a prisoner of Christ. Because that's what we are. Now we belong to him, and he demands our attention. And so... To walk with God, to walk without God. God says that we must fear him and walk with him. In other words, we must reverence him. You can't walk with anybody that you don't respect. 
And so what he is saying is that you have to learn to respect no matter what you think you see that's going on that may cause you not to respect me, realize that I'm in control and I see the long game. All you see is the short game. I see the long game. And there are things that may happen in your life that may not be satisfactory to you, but it's going to be beneficial for you. I don't want you losing respect for me because you don't understand why I'm doing these things in your life. Satan has no control of your life now. Now that you are a child of God, Satan does not have the permission to bother or touch you unless the permission comes from God. So we need to stop just throwing his name out there. All this stuff that's going on, the devil ain't made you do it. Sister say the devil ain't made you do it. Did it because it felt good. It, you didn't care what the outcome was at the moment. It felt good. And my prayer is, is that I don't get caught in the midst of it. You know, it's a good thing that the children in the audience, because I could explain that a little bit even better, but I'm not going to. You understand where I'm coming from. But God says you can't walk with me unless you respect me and that you're in agreement with me that I am your God and there is none other than me. I am the God, G, capital G, O-D, of little G-O-Ds. So God is trying to say to us that there are other gods in this world that can draw you from me and he does not want that to happen in your life. He wants to be the only God that you know and respect and follow and walk with. People can tell that you belong to God by your walk in life. If you're walking with him, they can instantly say, there's something special about that woman, about that man. I have gone completely with no signs on me whatsoever uh, into elements, and people will instantly, you know, you, you're a preacher, aren't you? You know. I've been in situations where uh, people did not know me at all the, the, uh, in, a, in, a, in a hospital bedroom where the only the person that knew me was the one that was in the bed. But walk in and immediately people, you know, uh, 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 Reverend, would you mind praying? For, and I'm looking around, how you know I'm a reverend? You know? Your walk and your demeanor will identify who you are. I told y'all the story back a long time ago when I thought, when I first became a preacher, I was so excited, I wanted everybody to know I was called a God. I had paranoid stuff on me, a, a, a gold platinum cross and angel wings here and a cross on my necktie lapel and boy, I was hooked up, you know. People know that I'm a preacher, that I'm a child of God, well, some kind of outward sign. And the preacher got up that day and preached a sermon about depending on, on, on paraphernalia, depending on the outward to identify who you are inward. Boy, I sat up here, man, I was turning red, sweating, you know, because I said, Lord, have mercy, man. He was just, like, that was the longest sermon in the world. And I was so glad when he got to the part of the invitation, I got up, went out there, I took all that stuff off, and I left it on the window counter. I noticed after a week it was gone, but whoever got it, bless your heart, you know. But I learned then I needed nothing to identify me as a child of God. My walk with him identifies me as a child of God. As we walk with him, our fellowship with him grows stronger and stronger. But let me tell you something. Other things happen in that. As you walk with him and your fellowship with him grows stronger, what you'll find out is that your fellowship among others will grow stronger. Because people want to draw, well, put, take it back. Children of God, people that know God, are drawn to others who know God and don't know why that's the case. They don't know why. They don't rec recognize that the Holy Spirit sees himself in you. Each one of us how the, how's the Holy Spirit, each one of us. And so when we come near each other, the Holy Spirit, same one who lives in me, sees himself in that person and he rejoices. Remember when, 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 when uh, Mary came in the presence of Elizabeth and, 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 uh, and she had the Christ child 
And then John the Baptist was, was also in her, and he jumped for joy and, and coming. The, the Holy Spirit sees himself, and he gets excited. But that happens when we walk closely with God, that people will start recognizing, and they will see God in you by the way of your walk. We commit ourselves to God. Following uh, Jesus, he requires us to, to, to grow as we walk with him. It's a requirement. But guess who, who orchestrates it? He does. You don't have to. Once you become born again, listen, if we were able to visualize it, the Bible says that now we are dead with Christ. Spiritually, this body is seen as being dead. So what's going on? The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, God Almighty, the fullness of the Godhead who dwells in you or is using your body now for his benefit. That, that, that's what's going on. That's what he wants. And as we walk with him, he's able to use us even that much more because as we walk with him, we see his presence in us. And then as we start to recognize in that presence, the second thing pops up, we learn to love our God. We learn to love him really when he brings disasters in our lives. Think about it. He brings the disasters so that he can demonstrate his love, so that he can take you past that disaster, so that you can see that the God who lives in you is able to overcome anything that's in your life. Oh man, that sounds all paradoxical. It sounds kind of weird, but that's how God operates. How can you know to love him if he doesn't have the opportunity to do things in your life to show you that he loves you? If you got a darling wife and you never bring jewelry home, guys, if you never do things out of the way, well, you can tell your wife's not here, so you're not obligated on this. <laughs> Deacon Groves looked at me like, uh-uh. But when you start to doing things, buying things, or, or just showing out of the uh, extraordinary how you love her, then the love that you have with her grows even stronger because she responds, and that's what God does in our lives. As we go along and we come across a disaster, the first thing that we always start to cry out, God, move the disaster out of the way. But that's not what God wants. God wants you to see that he can carry you past that disaster. If he moves it out of the way, how are you ever going to see the power of God? God keeps it there. And sometimes he may grow it stronger so that the blessing that you see will be recognized even stronger. But what he's definitely going to do is carry you past it. God is not going to bring things in your life for the purpose of destroying you. He's not in the business to destroy you. So whatever comes in your life, God is meaning it for good. But as he brings these things in your life, you'll learn to, to, to love him even more. You'll learn to, to care about him even more. Then all of a sudden, you start to want to walk with him even more because you recognize that the more you walk with him, the more you see his love. And, and the more that the love grows, the more you want to walk. And, and the more you walk, the more you want to love him. It just goes on and on and on. As we learn to love him, we learn to resist evil. That's what we learned. You can't do evil while you're recognizing his love. If Christ is forefront in your mind and you're saying, oh, Jesus, I love you so much. You, you know, you're mine. You're my savior. I love you. you. You can't have that expression in your heart and picks up an ax handle and bust somebody in the head. It, it just won't work. It, it, it doesn't connect. You can't do evil when Jesus is for, you know, just present in your life. You just can't. When you love our God, you learn to resist retaliation. You'll learn that God will handle it. As a matter of fact, if you want to see really something happen, just totally bless wherever the mess is coming from and then just watch God just tear it up. He has a way of doing it without destroying anything else around it. The Bible says he can cut asunder 
without damaging anything that's in the process. He can do that in the marriage. If you're having situations within your marriage, relationships, or whatever, give it to God. God has a way to go in there and, and cut the, the disagreement or cut the mess away and not harm the relationship at all. But you don't have that power because the moment you open your mouth, stuff going to come out. And the stuff that comes out ain't going to do no healing in the process at all. You have to leave it to God or else you're going to mess up the whole deal. But you only know to do that by loving him. When you love God and constantly recognizing your affection and your commitment toward him, you'll learn to be able to, to deal with all the evil that's around you and not resist or, or, or resist from not retaliating. The biggest thing is that you learn to be faithful to yourself. A lot of us hate ourselves. You don't recognize it, but, but you do. You, you have so much evilness that's passed through your life, and now that you're a child of God, see, a child of God can't love evil. So all of a sudden, you got this mixed mess in your heart to where you, know, you hate, but you see what you, you're doing. But when you love God and keep that strong in the forefront of your heart, you'll learn to, 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 to really be faithful to yourself, which means that you are faithful to God by loving each other and caring for each other. It becomes forefront in your thinking. You want to do for others rather than harm others. It's a beautiful thing to when you can know somebody dislike you. I won't use the word hate because believers don't hate. They, they, do, they dislike, you know. When you know for a fact that somebody dislikes you and in your spirit, the only thing that seems to want to come out is one to love them or, or, or embrace them. You, you, your heart even hurts that they have a dislike toward you. That's what happens when you allow the love of God to be preeminent in your heart and in your mind. But that's what God wants in us. He wants us to walk with him and to love him. And then we will learn how to love ourselves because a lot of us, we just don't love ourselves. You don't recognize that God has forgiven you for all the foolishness, all of it. He didn't say that I just forgave you for some stuff. He has forgiven you for everything. The problem is, is that you haven't forgiven yourself. You haven't let it go. It's gone. That's the past. If y'all look at Greg, which that's what I call my old name when, when I was a single man and out there, you know, some of the stuff that I enjoyed doing, sweet Zadie, y'all most likely wouldn't have voted for me to be your pastor. Because, you know, I did some stuff that was good, 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 but it wasn't beneficial to nobody wasn't beneficial to nobody but that's where God brings you through so that you can be a blessing to others that's what God does and then lastly God wants us to learn to obey him walk with him love him and obey him we can't obey God unless we learn to love him we can't walk with him unless we learn to respect him and we definitely cannot obey him if we don't respect him and we don't love him and we don't walk with him. So to be obedient to God, we must know that we have to love him. And then we have to, have to walk with him in agreement. That's the only way that we can come in our secret closets with prayers of forgiveness. Is Lord, I am wrong and you are right. Whatever it is, you are right and I'm wrong. God says in John, 1 John chapter, chapter 1, verse 9, that when you confess that, agreeing with him, then he says he will forgive you of all the stuff. If he's forgiven you for all the stuff, then why are you still trying to harm yourself and bring hurt on yourself? If God has forgiven you for all the foolishness that you've done, why are you still holding guilty toward your mate about stuff. God has forgiven you. 
God has released you from all that stuff. And so what he wants from you now is just to obey him. As he guides you through this life, learn to listen to him and obey him. He will speak to you. And the more that you listen to him, the louder his voice becomes in your heart. But it begins with a soft, sweet voice. And it's sometimes so easy to overlook because it is so sweet and so loving and so, so soft. And we're used to hearing those loud voices that are our own voices that's telling us, do it, because it's going to feel good. Do it, because it's going to feel good. You know. To whom? And who has been hurt in the process? That's where we don't take that into consideration. But God has, and God has forgiven. And listen to this. If God has forgiven you and forgiven what you have confessed to him, then the person you have harmed, God is going to bring a blessing to them as well to remove the hurt that they have. God's going to clear the whole slate. If you learn to forgive yourself, then others will have that same spirit of forgiveness in their hearts. But if you're still carrying around the guilt in your heart, then others are able to detect it, discern it, and they're going to reciprocate back toward you. But God says, I've forgiven you so that you're able to obey me. To serve him means service toward him. If God is leading you to do certain things in this ministry, that's what God is leading you to do. Don't say, well, I got to pray about it. Who are you going to pray for? Pray to. If God is speaking to you, who else are you going to pray to? Amen. To yourself? Amen. Who are you going to pray to? To obey God means that you're called to serve him. To serve is to strengthen the fellowship. Because what you're going to find out as you start serving God means that you're serving each other. That's what obedience to God brings about. To serve God means that God has a special way that he wants to, to do it. In, in Isaiah, you can write the scripture down, 58 verses 3 to 9. See, a, a, a lot of us old-fashioned people want to think that we can serve God by, by how we fast and so forth. Let me tell you what God says about that, okay? And then I'm going to finish up with that. Starting in verse 3, he says, Why have you fasted, they say, and you have not seen us? This is the people talking to God. Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? This is the fast that they were doing, withholding food, withholding water, not drinking, uh, withholding their affections toward their wives or husbands, you know, restraining from sex and all that kind of stuff. All those things that we do thinking that we're going to draw attention from God. Indeed, God says, you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen for you? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you clothe him. And here's the big one. Here's the big one. And not hide yourself from your own relatives. Not hide yourself from your own relatives. Real, real quick to say, I'm cutting you off. I'm tough loving you. And, 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 and walked away from relatives when God has blessed us to be able to help. And we don't do it. God says that that's not acceptable in my sight. He says, then your light shall, be, shall break forth like the morning. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. That's the fast that God wants. It's for us to be obedient to him and start sharing with others, caring for each other, clothe each other, 
And that doesn't necessarily mean that you go buy out a store and bring clothes here to put on there. That's not, that's not what God is talking about. God is talking about being watchful as he guides you and then touches your heart to do certain things. Because according to the Bible, if he touches your heart to bless in certain ways, he's going to give you the resources to do so. He's not going to tell you to go do something with zero in your bank account to do it. If God is expecting for you to be obedient to him and to do things that he's touching your heart to do, he's going to give that resource for you to do it. But God knew our weakness from time past. He knew that we were weak and that we were trodden down because we had the weight of, of, of Adam from the, from the Garden of Eden that was holding us down, having shame in our heart, guilt trodden, and everything else. So what did he do? He sent himself into this world. He put clothes on himself, he put flesh on himself, and he came down to the world. Now, don't, don't, don't ask me to explain it. You can't explain it. We can't tear apart the Trinity and be able to explain it. But that's what he did because God is the Father, he's the Son, and he's the Holy Spirit. He's all three in one. All three, but he's one God. But he came down into this world so that he could remove that curse that we had upon us to where we were hating each other and destroying each other and not doing for, for relatives and friends and, and so forth, thinking that the whole idea was to prosper yourself and to be alone. God wants us fellowshipping with each other, loving each other, caring for each other. As we walk with him, we will walk with each other. As we love him, we will learn to love each other. And then we'll learn to obey God as he umption us to do for others. That's what God wants. And so he sent his son into the world. And in this world, he fulfilled the law. And so God says, good. And then he took him to trial. God did it. They didn't take him. They couldn't take him. When they came for him in the garden and, they, and Jesus asked them, who are you looking for? When, when they said, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And the Bible says, Jesus said, I am. And it got no further than I am. And the Bible says they all fell back with him calling his own name. Because God has said over and over in scripture when he was asked, what is your name? He says, I am that I am. And the Bible says the second time he asked the same question, he says, I am, and they fell back again. See, they didn't take him. He took himself. If they'd have fell back and laid on the ground, I believe that he would have handcuffed himself and, and, and walked because he knew what he had to do and where he had to go. And they took him and they tried him five different times in front of all the, the rulers, the governor, the, 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 the emperor, and, and on and on. They, they tried him and, and they could find no fault in him. None of the lies that were being told on him would stick. None of them. And he didn't have to open his mouth. It just didn't stick. And then they had this brilliant idea that we would just tell the truth. Well, he say he's the son of God. They ask him and he says, that's what they say. They went on accusing him, accusing him. And he threw up no defense, none. He didn't open his mouth. No defense for himself because he knew what he had to do. He was obedient with the father because he was walking with him and he loved him. And he knew that he had upon him my sins. And the only way that my sin could have been paid for was for the blood that he had to shed. And so they, they found him guilty. The people did. The emperors washed their hands. They said, I'm through with it. I find no fault in this man. But they... They escorted him to Calvary. I'm going to have to stop saying they took him to Calvary because they didn't take him nowhere. 
they escorted him to Calvary. And I believe that if they had changed their minds at the last minute, he probably would have taken a hammer and nailed the nails in his own hands and feet. I don't know how that would work, but he's God. Maybe he would have called angels down and say, finish up the work, angels. We got to take care of this. But I'm being kind of forward a little bit because what I'm trying to show you that that was God's intent all along. It was by no accident. It was by no accident. His intent from the beginning was to pay for our sins. And they nailed him to the cross and they lifted him up on that cross and on that cross he died. A death that no man has died because what happened is that when he died, he was taken out of the presence of the Father. That's what hell is, the eternal, the eternal damnation that sinners have to face. Even Satan doesn't know to this day what it's like to be out of the presence of God. But for three days and three nights, he was out of the presence of his Father. In hell, even down there preaching. But what he did was satisfactory to the Father. He satisfied himself that all sin had been taken care of, which left no sin for us have to deal with, those of us who have chosen him as our Lord and Savior. And because of that, because of that completed task, God raised his son from the dead, bodily and alive. And after he was resurrected, the Bible said he walked on this earth for 40 days, still ministering, talking to people, doing ministry. The book of John, the last chapter and the last verse, y'all should look at it sometimes. The Gospel of John, last chapter, last verse, said, that if we were to record everything that Jesus did, that the world itself could not contain the books. Only God would be able to do something like that. But he walked on this earth for 40 days, and then he was lifted up in heaven. And as he was being lifted up, his disciples was watching. And, and there were men that were arrayed brilliantly standing near him and said to them, why are you gazing at him going up? You got work to do. And that's what he is saying to us today. What does God require of us? The work we have to do got nothing to do with working to get no salvation. He's taking care of all of that. The work that he has for us to do is to walk with him so that people can see him through us, to love him so that they can see the love that he is wanting to give all mankind and to obey him as he guide us through this life. That's what God wants of us. But the, God, the, the gospel ends up saying that he's coming back. He's coming back for his church. He's coming back for all of his believers. He's not going to leave any of us behind. He's coming back for you. How are you going to be found? Are you going to be found walking with him? Loving him with every step that you make in life? Obeying him as you hear him speak to your heart? Is that what you're going to be found doing? Or are you going to be found sitting on your front porch in your rocking chair? Spitting watermelon seeds in the yard. That, that's country. That's what we did back in the country. But God wants us busy. That's what he requires of us. If you haven't been doing it, this is a wonderful day to start. Ask God, God, what does it mean to me to walk with you? What does it mean to me to demonstrate or see your love that you have for us? And Lord, Lord, most of all, fix my heart to where I can hear you and be obedient to you in this life. That's what God is requiring of each one of us. Now, there may be someone out here today who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. If that is the case, then everything that we have talked about means nothing at all to you. 
because God's message to you is salvation for he died was buried and raised on the third day that's the gospel the Bible says that's the power unto salvation no other way I don't care how much money you come up and give or, or if you can come and pay off the mortgage you can do all kinds of other stuff that you want to do oh amen look at what God's doing little sister Tishner look at her bless her heart God is speaking God is speaking brothers and sisters beloved God is speaking and he wants to touch your heart he wants to embrace you he wants you in the family if that's you today don't 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 shut him down don't shut him down you're going to regret it for the rest of your life just be obedient just be obedient and God will bless you. Amen. Amen. Look at you. Amen. 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 That's what God wants for us to be obedient. So why don't you come? Jesus, the only invitation he gave every time he preached was simply come. He didn't say leave your cavassier at the seat. He said bring it with you. He didn't say throw the crack pipe up under the seat before you come. He said, bring it with you. Let me show you that I can be God in your life and remove those things that are impediments between me and you. That's what God says. So just come. Let Jesus, let Jesus handle it. Just come. To Jesus. The invitation is always going, even though we moved to something else, the invitation is still going. God has blessed us today, and that's what is so important. We can go home with lifted hearts and, and the weight of whatever we brought here with us. Jesus has taken it. You know, if you see in your mind, have your child ever picked up a butcher knife and then you reach and try to grab it from them and they just keep pulling back and wanting to keep playing with it and you know it's dangerous. That, that, that's where we are with Christ. He's trying to take things away from us that's destroying us and, and we're saying, no, I want it, I want it, I want it, like a little child. But he's going to have the last word the same way you would because no matter what, you still wouldn't let your child play with a butcher knife because you know that it would bring danger to their lives. Don't resist God. Don't resist Jesus. He is the master of your life. Amen. Amen. God bless you. My, my, my. Walk with him, love him and obey him. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship and giving. And Father, we do thank you today. Uh, we're going to be obedient to your word. And we're going to present our offerings to you this day. Thank you for the offering that we're about to receive for the upbuilding of your kingdom. For it is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.
Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. announcements okay that's the uh, fellowship I mean the uh, brotherhood uh, fellowship that we're going to have it's like a prayer breakfast uh, on the uh, the 19th of November uh, Saturday morning and I believe it starts at 9 o'clock we're going to have uh, uh, food and um, what's that? Spiritual food and real food too. Yeah. And, and it's going to be pork sausage instead of turkey sausage. I've been working on our deacon. I was wondering whether he's Muslim or something, man. No pork, no pork. That's the man, please. That's the that's the joy of life. I'm telling you. Yeah. Amen. Turkey sausage, huh? Ooh, yuck. Ooh, yuck. Okay. Yes. Turkey sausage. Ooh, yuck. Bless you, Jesus. Good, good morning. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Pulpit Associates, mm -hmm. St. Joseph. Great afternoon. It is truly, truly, truly a blessing. Oh, yes. God. I know babies are my heart, so oh, yes. I start tearing up, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right behind Busy, you. Church business. Yes. Today, Pastor, we have Sister Lamaya Tischler. Yes. She accepts Jesus Christ oh, as her Lord. personal Lord and Savior. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, oh yes. bless you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. And she is a candidate for baptism. All right. We know her as the daughter of the lovely um, Lindsay and Greg yeah. Tischler. Yes. Well, Lindsay, you yes. Know they are. Right there, yes. Amen. So, Pastor, oh, I introduce man. to you Sister Maya Tischler. All right. Okay. Sister Tischler, would you mind standing? From now on, that's how in the spiritual realm you are referenced as Sister, Sister Tischler. I am so happy that you've chose Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You, you yourself have no idea yet what a blessing that's going to be in your life. He's going to make a big difference in the choices that you make and, and how your life is going to be as you grow, grow older. Amen. But um, we're going to uh, have the, the, the ministry of new disciples. They will be getting in contact with you and your parents and uh, walking you through the steps until we finally meet in the pool. You're not afraid of water, are you? Praise the Lord. I love it too. And our pool is warm. You may not want to get out of it once you get in it. It's nice and warm and stuff, you know. So that's going to be a joyous time. Amen. And, and preachers, I'm going I'm to I'm do the baptizing, okay, if y'all let me. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Amen. I'll be the one baptizing you. Amen. I just pretend to ask them for permission. I don't have to. I'm the pastor. <laughs> But I'm extending to you now the right hand of welcome. Amen. 
And I'm just so happy. I'm just running off at the mouth. I have so much to say, but God bless you. Amen? I mean, you may go back to your seat. Okay. Oh, That's she it, is so adorable. That's it. That's it? That's it. For today. For today. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I see Sister Jackson not here, so we still ain't got her down here yet. Okay. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Everybody say amen. Everybody say Everybody say amen, 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 amen. What a beautiful day God has blessed us with. All right, all right. no announcements. So we did the announcements and, and welcomed everybody and all that's beautiful. All right, here comes Sister Steele. My pastor, Dr. Gregory, Reverend Fisher, Reverend Gibson, St. Joseph, good afternoon. Now we're trying to remind you about our Stone State, which is coming up um, Wednesday night will be the first night and then we're also having it Sunday. That's the day you would like to uh, really be here. Please invite your families and friends. I just want to give you a little something to look forward to. Now, on November the 12th, 1989, the first what means these stone was uh, observed by Pastor Rim. But the history started in 1930 when Pastor Edwards first organized the St. Joseph Baptist Church. After Pastor Edwards retired in 1970, God led to St. Joseph, Dr. H.T. Rim. So if you want to hear more about our history, please, by all means, be here Wednesday night at 7, six. at 6, and also Sunday. Thank you. Sunday at 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Steele. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Yes, we're going to meet here on Wednesday. Okay, right. We, we, we haven't been inside and, and looked at it. I don't, without an inspection or so on inside, I don't want to, you know, go in. So what now, sir? We don't want to go in, right? Okay, all right. So we're having services here. Okay, we can see the building. And as a matter of fact, a Sunday morning uh, at 10 o'clock, we'll, we'll meet here and then uh, pray, and then we will walk down to the, to the old annex, and then we will recite the liturgy and do our stuff there, and then we will walk back up here, and we will begin our morning service. Amen? Amen. All right. Sister, Sister Hackley. Oh, yeah. Are there any other questions? That's what she's asking. Any questions? Yes. Dress down uh, next Sunday. Be up overalls and brogane shoes. <laughs> Tie your mule upside, outside. And then just come on in. Make me think of the days back, Carl, when we were little bitty kids. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Any other questions? I want to see how well y'all, how what kind of fashions in your dress down is going to look. Okay? All right. Now, dressing down doesn't mean provocatively dressing. Okay? Because we're still Christians. Yep. And uh, that doesn't mean that. And I'm saying that because, as once a principal, we had a dress down day, and I had to send 
three or four girls call their parents and get them back home. You know, because gracious, their idea of dress down wasn't what I had intended. Amen. Uh, with that now, we're going to uh, go into our uh, communion service or our Lord's table. Uh, so I'm going to ask uh, who's going to do the covenant? Okay. We all clear out there, ushers. Let's keep our hearts and our minds focused on what Jesus did for us at Calvary. Amen. Having been led as we believe, been may we all stand. I'm sorry. I am. Forgive me. Let's. Let's start over. Having been led as we believe, as we believe by, the of God, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the, Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully, entering to covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love to strive for the advancements of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindreds and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagement, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tiling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling, and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, and mindful of the rules of our Savior, to secure it without delay. We more over engage that when we, when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word.
Amen. Ordained ministers, ordained deacons. Turn your hearts and your minds on Calvary, for it was there that God blessed us by shedding his blood for us. In the scriptures, in, the chap in Luke chapter 22, then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall be a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the good man of the house, The master said unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat of thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Now Jesus prayed as they were beginning to enjoy the Lord's Supper. Of course, we cannot pray the prayer that Jesus did, but I'm going to ask Reverend Fisher if he would Our Father, we are so grateful and thankful for this privilege to come to your table. We recognize your word. You said in your word, as we eat of this bread and drink of this wine, we do show your death until you come again. Lord, we are so grateful for this opportunity Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And Father God, we ask now that you will bless the elements that we will use today to simulate your table. Bless each of us who will participate. Bless their homes. And Lord, with all said and done, we do show your death until you come again. And Father, we do this in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name we pray. And for his sake, amen.
your mind on Jesus. Has everyone been served? No one been omitted? Elements, please. On the same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he blessed it, and then he broke it. He said, this bread represents my body that we've broken for you on Calvary Cross. In remembrance of me, eat. And in the same manner, he took the cup he said, this cup, represent the, 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 this cup represent the blood in my New Testament. In remembrance of me, drink.
never forget that it was the blood it always will be the blood that makes the difference and he shed his blood for each one of us so that we would have the privilege to stand in the presence of the father we are invited into the throne room in his presence on a, on a continual basis there's no limit if we go there a hundred times in a day spiritually he, we are welcomed God is a wonderful God, and we need to keep that in mind. As we face problems and issues during the day, is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that has made the difference. Now, on that night, if we always stand, on that night that he was betrayed by Judas and that he instituted the Lord's Supper, and he did other things there as well, when they were finished worshiping, the Bible said he sung a hymn, and then they all went out into that dangerous, dangerous place. It's no different than Jacksonville, in the bold city of Jacksonville. It's, you, you know, you could be shot, killed, and in a moment's notice for no reason whatsoever. So we here at St. Joseph, since we don't know the hymn that Jesus sang, we, we sang, Jesus, keep me near the cross. I invite all of us to sing together with gusto, as Pastor M used to say, and with boldness of heart, Jesus, keep me near the cross. joy to our hearts as we have fellowship together and, and worshiped and lift your son this day. God, we just thank you for the blood that you shared for each one of us as you have cleansed us from the sin that, that keeps us out of your presence. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for your word today, what you require from each of us, that is to walk with you, to love you, and to obey you. And Father, we pray that you would allow your Holy Spirit to bring that alive in each one of our hearts and bless us in the midst. And now unto him who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus.
that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. It is unto him that we pray, that we lift and honor, that you will keep us as we come together again as a family. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray, and all of your saints shall sing together. Amen, amen, and amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen.